Hey, 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 friends. Happy Friday and welcome back to another episode of Thriving Thoughts. I'm your host, Dr. Sherry. We are bringing this season to a close already. I know some of you all might be wondering what is happening. It's not a close just yet. We're going to have two more episodes next week on friendship and then the Thriving Thoughts podcast has an announcement, a special announcement for you. Don't worry, I am not going anywhere. Things might just look a little bit different around. But as promised, I do want to share some more thriving thoughts that I have with you about friendship. You've probably heard this quote in one form or another, and I'm unsure to whom to give credit for this quote. So if it's yours, write into the show at thriving thoughts with Dr. Sherry at gmail.com and let me know. People enter our lives for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. We only get disappointed if we try to force relationships beyond their purpose. That is such a beautiful truth. It is a thriving thought. And by thriving, I mean one that really stretches our way of thinking. Sometimes it's so hard for us to, quote unquote, let go of relationships, let go of friendships. I'm not sure that it's necessarily letting go, much like the experience of grief, whenever something changes in your life, when you lose somebody, even if it's losing somebody by choice, I actually make reference to that, by the way, in one of the chapters in my book, Breakup Breakthroughs, um, which people have told me is about friendships as well as uh, romantic relationships. So you may want to follow up this season by grabbing a copy of that Breakup Breakthroughs and applying it to maybe some of the past relationships, past friendships in your life that have ended um, that were there for a reason, a season. Maybe there was a season of your life where you tried to push that relationship further beyond its designed purpose. I do believe there is a designed function or purpose for each of the relationships and friendships in our lives. And yes, I believe that we erringly suppose that friendships once formed must last forever. You might argue, well, I don't think they'll last forever. Yet rather than taking the time to explain it, to understand that maybe it was for a season or a reason, we use phrases like, we just drifted apart or we lost touch. Now you guys know in a thriving thought world, one must be intentional. So those two statements, we just drifted apart or we lost touch, reflect unintentionality. They reflect the trite musings of a striving thought world and not a thriving thought world. And I want you friends to grow, flourish, and prosper. I don't want you to get stuck in a pattern of lies or making excuses or using phrases, strings of words that do not prompt you to grow. When you push yourself to grow in these areas, to understand that friendships are there for seasons and reasons, and that beyond that purpose, there is no purpose for them to be a part of you. Once you understand that, there's a couple of things that you can do. One, you stop taking things so personally. And two, you are then in a better position to understand the purpose behind friendship and share that with somebody else who's going to need to know that. Maybe that's your daughter or your son Maybe that's the young children in your household or the children that you teach. Some friendships are there for a lifetime and some are there for a season. And I think there's a reason for both of those things. I want to share with you a couple of personal experiences. So I have one friend. We've been friends for, gosh, 43 years. We've been friends for 43 years. During that 43 years, there were many years where we did not talk, where I would still consider her my friend, but we didn't really connect. We didn't email. We didn't text. We didn't phone call. We didn't visit. And then when we did reconnect, it was certainly intentional to reconnect. And probably with my dear friend, it was her intention that she's like, I'm not going to let you, you know, this, this relationship, this friendship is a lifetime. And Sherry, you've been away for too long. This was actually when I went away to grad school. We really lost touch. But if I'm honest, I was unintentional about staying in touch. You see how that changes things a little bit? Ugh, doesn't feel so good, but it's true. And that's okay. I give myself permission to do that. And my dear friend has given me grace to do that and welcomed me back into her, our friendship with loving arms. 
And now that friend is so close. And this season of our friendship now is one where we regularly text, regularly visit, and we do that intentionally. In fact, we have a girl's trip that we go on every year, and we've been doing that, oh, I guess for the past five or six years, except we did not get to go uh, the last two years. Uh, last year, because of the global pandemic and things shutting down, and then the year prior, unfortunately, her husband fell ill and uh, he eventually passed. So we haven't been for two years and we have a trip scheduled this September, our first official return to our girls weekend. So I'm really excited about that. But I say all of this to share with you that if you adopt a, a striving mindset that says this friendship is supposed to be different than it is now, one, you have to be intentional about it. Be intentional about what you want. Two, perhaps it's a season to accept that this is not supposed to be an active, intentional, growing friendship at this time. See, I believe we have to know our bandwidth. I know it's a really techie word and I'm not a techie person at all, but we do have to know our bandwidth. You've heard me say on multiple of these uh, Thriving in Friendship episodes that you should be able to count on one hand or fewer fingers the number of very close friends that you have. That's because we do not have the bandwidth to have that level of intimacy with a myriad of people. So I'm thankful to my friend that she was intentional in reconnecting with me and that she gave me the grace I needed to be able to come back into that friendship and experience just how strong and beautiful that friendship is now. Now, I have another friend who was like my sister. And when I say like my sister, I mean, I bawled and bawled and bawled <laughs> when we moved apart. And we did grow apart because priorities in her life were different and priorities in my life were different. And we ended up moving to kind of opposite ends of the East Coast. During the time of our friendship, I felt like I couldn't live life without her. She was that much of a part of me. Now, as the fracturing of the relationship began, it hurt a lot because I really missed her. And I navigated my way through that. Eventually, there was no communication, no connection. And maybe a couple of years ago, probably about two years ago or so, we reconnected. We haven't seen one another. Um, we don't have that type of relationship now, but we've picked up the phone a couple of times and we've chatted and I love her dearly. And that space, literally, she holds a space in my heart. She has two beautiful girls now. So they've kind of entered that space too, even though I haven't met them yet. But she will always have this special place of my heart and she will always have a special piece of my heart with her because she is my sister. And that relationship was for a season, that that level of intimacy, of closeness was for a season. And I'm so grateful for that. I have such fond memories and really grew in my ability to love and be loved in that friendship. So I share those two examples with you to understand that even if you reconnect with somebody, your relationship may never be the same as it was before. Or conversely, like in the first example I shared, your relationship could be far way better than you ever thought it would be. Maybe you'll be so much closer to that friend than you ever thought you'd be. Also, there's a possibility that you will never reconnect. I do want to invite you to consider the people in your life that have been friends with you for a season. And I want you to contemplate if there's something in the back of your head and you're, you're thinking, I really want to know how they're doing. I really would like to, to reach out to them. I say, by all means, do that. Be intentional about it and be purposeful about it. Why do you want to reach out? Why do you want to do that? Do you, do you just want to catch up? Do you just want to keep your finger on the pulse? Make sure they're doing well. That's great. But have your expectations clearly delineated in your mind about what you want and what you anticipate. Be intentional about it. And understand that when friendships get fractured, when they stop being a priority, it's okay. Give yourself some grace. Give other people grace. And understand that when you are ready to make that relationship a priority, it's because that is a new season of your life where that friend is a needed, necessary part of your life. And perhaps you are for them as well. 
So that's today's quick message for you on thriving in friendship. Be intentional and understand that your friends may be there for only a season or a lifetime, and both are beautiful. Share your favorite takeaway from today's episode on your Insta story and tag me at Dr. Sherry Speaks and use the hashtag Thriving Thoughts with Dr. Sherry. And we'll see you right back here next Tuesday and Friday for two final episodes on Thriving in Friendship. And next Friday, you are definitely going to want to tune in and not miss the big announcement for the newest season of Thriving Thoughts with Dr. Sherry. All right, friends, remember always to speak truth over the lies and a promise you will thrive. You will grow, flourish, and prosper in every and any circumstance. Love you, friends. Bye.